Hey everyone, today I'd like to start a short series of videos about running your first game of Break, or your first saga, I should say. Um, in general, I think GM advice is, is pretty uh, plentiful. Everyone's got a good bit of how they think a game should be run. Um, and obviously the Break book itself has uh, a a uh, section on GMing that I think prove, can prove useful to you. But also, I think a little bit of um, frank conversation and, you know, being able to listen to someone speak candidly about it might also be of help to newcomers. So I thought this would be a good idea to do. Uh, I'm thinking this is going to be one of three videos, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, in this one, we're going to focus on sort of fleshing out your your saga your break saga and figuring out the stuff you need like think of this as like pre-preparation for your game as a whole now one thing i'd like to point out is that no matter what i say here or anyone else says uh gming is a very personal thing and just like playing in a game is and you're going to kind of you know if this is your very first time running a game, uh, I can say you're going to learn a lot about what you're good at and what you need work on, and like also that uh, you get a help. A lot of a lot of what makes a game good also comes from the players. So, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. It's a it's a learning process, and what I'm doing here and what I'm talking about here isn't prescriptive. It's more like just kind of general s stuff to nudge you in the right direction. So, okay, uh, when you sit down and you decide, okay, I'm going to run a game of break for my friends or for some, some friends on the internet or even at like a convention or something like that, um, you, you need to start somewhere. And uh, even if you're only running a few short adventures or even one adventure, I still think these ideas can be helpful. Um, but right now, for this, uh, for this video, we're going to focus, assuming that you're running a, a long-term, you know, um, uh, either, for either a handful of sessions or, you know, uh, enough sessions to get your players from rank 1 to rank 10 um, style of saga. Um, so when you first sit down to do this, the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to get the idea, the general idea of the kind of game you want to run. Um, and I have a couple of, of things that like, I think are good to lean into when you do this. Um, you don't have to come up with it whole cloth. Uh, I think that it's okay to, if you have a particular, like say you have a particular show you like, or a particular book you like, or even another game that you're fond of, and you think it had a cool plot or a cool like you know sequence uh, that it went through and you want to kind of emulate that or draw from that, I think that's perfectly fine. You know, you're going to, no matter what you do, you're going to put your own spin on it. Um, but at the same time, if you do have a good idea that's mostly original, it's, you know, that can be a lot of fun too, because you can really play with it and, and expand on it. But anyway, figure out that idea. Even if it's something as, you know, uh, like, for example, a good example of like saga ideas is like, okay, there's this, old skyship that's a that was a, a warship for a for the Akenian sky navy and like there's some people who want to unearth it and they want to because they want to use its power for some kind of nefarious end or even perhaps a misguided a noble but misguided end you know that's a good saga because it gives you a lot to to go with that's that gives you a sort of uh target of interest it gives you um, some obvious adversaries, and there's like twists and turns, like how how do they unearth and and sort of get this ship flying again? Um, you know, uh, what do they have to? You know, is anyone trying to stop them? Is there some legend or some portent that says that people shouldn't bring the ship back around? That kind of stuff. Um, it can even be something as, you know, I, I don't think that, I think this is a little played out and probably wouldn't use it, but, you know, uh, a particularly important person gets captured or kidnapped 
at, by a uh, someone who has like you know doing some kind of evil plan or ritual or whatever and you know someone has to go rescue them even that's like a good thing to sort of build on perhaps as something as sort of you know cliche and as that can be fun to play around with because you can subvert expectations or that kind of stuff but anyway once you have that basic idea that sort of you know sentence or one paragraph or whatever idea you can really start running from there um once you have that figured out you're going to want to figure out your like tone of the game and the themes around it and this is a little more nebulous and and kind of um you know uh tricky because they're not there's not a lot of like definite uh definites here so a good example of this is like tone you might say okay well this game is going to be uh you know um generally whimsical but uh have some moments of seriousness and that kind of stuff you know that's that's a good tone that's that suits break really well uh but what the threshold for what's like whimsical and what's like too silly is going to change from group to group uh but it's still good to kind of have your idea of what this is going to do because this isn't really this these things aren't really for other people uh you know it might be if you're pitch using this to pitch to your group but like this is mainly for you so decide on a kind of tone you want and also the themes of the game which seems a little heavy it seems a little high minded for you know what what's essentially like a, a fun uh you know weekly or biweekly uh afternoon activity for you and your friends but i think it's good to keep to because it 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 helps you um like organize your thoughts and, and kind of decide where you want to go as far as adventures go. So when I say themes are like is the theme hope? Is the theme like revenge? Is the theme, you know, uh that that the past is poison and you don't want to dredge it up and that kind of stuff. Um and again just like tone, this is really more for you and it it helps you kind of figure like out like how the direction you want to do and and the kind of like um places you might want to come up with and things you might want to come up with. So uh if we go back with our previous example with the the warship, I would probably com- I would probably go with a sort of uh you know, maybe we shouldn't bring these kind of terrors from the past back uh no matter the reason. Um and then you can kind of like say that can help you inform like uh say you'll have adventures that'll show like that'll slowly reveal what this warship was capable of and and the sort of damage it caused and that kind of thing. Um so anyway, once you have that down, um you've got your basic plot, you've got how you want that to feel and and the sort of emotions and and things you want that to focus on. Then I think the next thing I always do is figure out what's going to happen if nobody stops the the you know if nobody interferes with this plot right and this isn't always dramatic so obviously with our warship uh example you know if no one interferes someone's the the people seeking it you know resurrect to this warship and they they do they carry out whatever operation they want to do with it and you know some probably some great disaster follows but say your macguffin is that or say that your um your idea is a little more uh passive than that like say it's that there's a hidden treasure somewhere um out there and like you know the 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 players in other groups might find a map um like that leads them to that treasure and if they if nobody goes to seek it out you know it's um it's just going to stay there forever but you know maybe this treasure has some greater importance and you can think of that now too the reason why you want to know or the reason why you want to think about what's going to happen in your saga if nobody does anything is because once again just like the other two factors here it can kind of help you uh think on your feet when you're um coming up with ideas and you're coming up with adventures and you're coming up with the people around it because if you know how it's supposed to and I say supposed to in air quotes here supposed to go 
um, you can adjust on the fly when the players inevitably mess it up because uh, player characters, I always like to think of player characters as essentially interlopers one way or another. For good and for ill, they are meddlers. They're messing with stuff. And if you can better kind of uh, work around them being meddlesome if you know what they're meddling with. So um, I think that's why it's good to figure out ahead of time what happens without the interference. So uh, moving along, um, another th the next thing I like to think of is the general sort of adventures that will come from your idea. And this is going to be informed by the uh, first three things we talked about. But generally, like, okay, are, you know, think of your average, like, Legend of Zelda game, right? Is you're presented, there, you're at the beginning of the game, you're presented with a threat that needs to be stopped or a problem that needs to be solved. And uh, this problem can usually be solved by items or some important thing retrieved from dungeons. So in this case, the idea, um, you know, the, the main kind of adventures you're going to have from this is exploring these old adventure sites and sort of um, dealing with the dangers within to recover those things. And that's a, not a bad, that's a pretty good, solid idea. It, Break is very good at handling uh, that kind of adventure. So it's a, good, it's a good way to go. In our previous example with the warship, um, you know, those adventures, they could go all over the place. And so you have to think a little harder on like the kind of things you want to run and the kind of things that you think will you'll be able to like, you know, uh, really nail when you want to do it. So for example, um, you might have a lot of adventures in sort of, uh, you know, where the um, players are, are trying to find experts like historians and, and Magitek and artificers, Magitek gadgeteers and artificers who might know about the ship and, and know how to get it running, or who might be being hunted by um, the adversaries that uh, want to, to bring this warship up. Or it could be exploring old runes for like parts to do so, or like, you know, trying to decipher old maps or old instructions. Um, if you kind of really nail these, this down, you again can start kind of formulating ideas. You know, it gives you a good base to uh, really think about and, and uh, you know, to build from. And really, you know, I should add that too. We're really, when you're thinking of all these kind of factors, you're really building a foundation uh, to work with from out. These are things to help you focus, like meditative uh, kind of things to like, you know, get your mind going. Um, once you kind of figure out the general sort of adventures, then you can really think about the key players in the saga, uh, which I always have a lot of fun with. It's probably my favorite part of coming up with a new one. Uh, is that you can think of like who are the villains, who are uh, the potential allies of the players, you know, who who's involved but not particularly, um, you know, not al not aligned on either side. Uh, and when you kind of figure that out, you can think of other like you know when if you have the idea of the kind of adventures you want to do, y you can kind of better decide this. So like say you know with our idea, you want to make it. Uh, a combination of the two things I thought I thought I would mention, like it's a the common the campaign uh, around this warship will be um, generally moving to various cities uh, that are rumored to have experts or information on this uh, this ancient uh, Magitek warship, and then like you know you they the players are going to have to like talk to you know nerds and other. Uh, craftsmen and scholars uh, or kind of find them before the enemies do uh, and they're also going to have to plumb like these sort of ancient ruins uh, to find maybe you know the navigation system for the ship or the keys to it or something like that um, and so you might decide okay so the adversaries in this one they're going to be a band of mercenaries of like hardened mercenaries uh, you know, that come from all walks of life, but they're all particularly attached to a charismatic leader. Um, 
And like that gives you, you know, once you figure that out, you can kind of decide like, okay, like you might go, okay, this charismatic leader leader is like um, a, 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 sort of vet, veteran uh, veteran battle princess who's uh, been hardened by what sh what they've seen in the world and seek to to bring this worship back to um, you know like take out you know take out some big evil thing or protect something that they really want and they're kind of not thinking about the other consequences uh, but then you have like and then you go okay so the the people who work for this battle princess then, you can design them as almost like, you know, grizzled mirrors of the the players' party, and like add other like, you know, individuals who would be adventurers, uh, who have also experienced the same thing, or for whatever reason believe in this, uh, their leader, and are willing to lay down their lives. And you can make a bunch of really sympathetic but still dangerous adversaries out of that. Um, and you know. Uh, like once you have those down, you can think of like, oh well, you know, now that I have have this this kind of cool list of of enemies in my head, um, I can think of some cool adventures around that. And similar similarly too with the allies, like if you have, um, you know, if you decide scholars of some kind are going to be really important to the saga, you can then go, okay, well, I should, uh, you know, um, like visiting old archives and libraries are going to be a thing and that's always really fun uh to kind of like suss out and figure out so um not a bad idea to have you know you don't have to come up with everyone who's going to show up but not a bad idea to have like a good idea of the the ones you want to show up there and finally um the the uh, sort of uh, like once you have all this down, you can sort of look at, um, think about it, and think of a good place for your saga to start. Um, and if you're running in the outer world, uh, you know you can kind of open up that section of the book and look at like all the different like regions and like places in that region, and maybe pick one that you think is a really uh, good starting point for your saga. Um, or like if you're making up your own. Uh, campaign setting you can really like play around with it and make one that's sort of custom tailored to this and the reason why i think it's important to figure out like where you want to start out of as is because depending on the scale of your saga for example it might actually take place in this one region right not every saga is going to be a world spanning one you know you might uh want to focus on a particular part of like say no folks land you might take that no folks land and, and say, okay, this is in a, in a small nation state, like a small, uh, you know, free city nearby. And like this saga is going to be about the trials of that place. Our, our example of the ancient Magitek warship, that's probably going to be a, a sort of world spanning uh, saga, but they don't all have to be. So this first place you start is not only like is, is, kind of variance in importance, but I still think it's important even if they're going to move from it. Uh, because once you have that figured out, you can sort of um, figure out all the cool places there and sort of slowly build outwards as you need to. Like, um, something I think is really useful, for example, is, okay, this is the first region they're going to be in. It's this place around a particular city. And then on the map that you kind of make in your head, or even just on the map you actually draw out or write down, you can go, okay, if they go this in this direction, it heads to this place, this direction it heads to this place, so on and so forth. And that way you know you have you know have an idea of where the camp the, the saga might go, and um, you know, you're not totally in the dark if something unexpected happens. Um so this first region, uh, you know, and there is a um, a lot of uh, information in the breakbook about making these maps and that kind of stuff. So uh, I think those are good to look into if you're doing that. Um, and finally, once you have the region figured out, you can sit down and you can think of your very first adventure. Um, this is kind of like the culmination of everything you've already figured out. Um, 
because you're going to go, okay, what's going to happen in this adventure? You know, do the, the, you can figure out the sort of, the sort of fine details. Does, does the party already know each other? Um, you know, are they going to meet during this adventure? And like, it can have, it doesn't need to, but it can have this sort of event that sets them on the general pa path of your saga. Like, you know, they might discover an ancient treasure map or they might encounter, uh, encounter like a scholar who's running from those, the adversaries um, and who tells them about their plan and how they have to stop them and that kind of stuff. Um, and this doesn't, you know, and this is also kind of going to be based on your personal GM style, right? So like, say you want to run a pretty narratively tight uh, saga and you, um, you can use this set, you can like sort of set this up almost like you would the opening of like a show or a movie, um, which, you know, don't be too surprised if the players break from that because they're going to, but like, you know, that's not a bad way to go if that's the kind of game you want to run. Um, or if you're like a more open and you kind of want to set up like, oh, you're in this region and there's some cool places to visit. Um, one way or another, it's good to know like what's a, it's good to kind of use this as a way to figure out what's this first adventure going to be and, and what kind of, uh, and how's this going to lead them in further into the saga itself. Um, and like, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It doesn't have to connect to all your dots. Um, but it's going to set the tone. It's going to set the, it's going to help. I should say it's going to help set the tone. It's going to help play up the themes. It's going to give them, it's, it's a good place to sort of also level set with the players and, and sort of, um, end up talking about what you want to do with what you want to do with the game and the kind of stuff they're going to be rewarded, rewarded for. And they can also use it to communicate what they want to do. Right? Like if you, uh, you might find that the players uh, desire a more, you know, if you, you might run an open for a session and, and find out the players are, are more into something, uh, you know, narratively tight or the opposite might happen. You, they might struggle against the constraints of the adventure and, and want to branch out. And you can kind of use this adventure as a way to, to gauge that and figure things out. And of course, um, this is also assuming too, and I think it's a really good idea to have a sort of session zero where you level set to begin with. But even if you do that, you're still going to find stuff out in this first session. Uh, so I think it's a good thing to figure out. And once you figure out the very first adventure, uh, I think it's also useful to kind of take down a couple of like where things might go. Because then you have something that like, if, you know, um, you know, the, the players, things might be up in the air after that first adventure. And you could go, oh, you could do this, you could do that. Uh, and, or, it, you know, you might be able to kind of suss out where it's going to go naturally from what they did in that first session. Um, and yeah, and so these are just some little basic things on running your first saga. Um, I'm hoping this was helpful, or at the very least you enjoyed the art and me kind of blabbing, around, blabbing on for a little bit here. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to do a couple more of these, uh, GMing videos. Anyway, thank you again for enjoying, uh, well, I said I'm being presumptuous, but I hope you're enjoying break. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your morning slash afternoon slash evening. Um, bye for now.